Okay guys, this month I am coming at you through the medium of voiceover because I haven't managed to film anything, but there is a lot going on this month. So here's a quick summary. The perpetual twilight of the Northern Hemisphere is finally coming to an end. The nights are getting longer and they're getting darker. There's a, a last chance to get some noctilucent clouds. There's the first chance to get a little bit of the Northern Lights. The Milky Way core is still dominating the night sky. It's out all night. And then we've also got the Perseids meteor shower to look forward to this month. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 29,000 classes in design, business, and all things photography and videography. If you're looking to brush up on your landscape astrophotography, then you should check out this course by Ian Norman, the guy behind LonelySpec.com. He covers all the basics you need to know to capture and edit amazing nightscape images that include things like the Milky Way. There's also another course run by adventure photographer and Instagram legend Chris Burkhardt. He teaches you outdoor photography from sunset set to sunrise and even capturing wonderful images in the nighttime that exists between. Skillshare is super affordable, an annual subscription costs just £7 a month and that gives you access to all of the courses and you can try as many as you like. But if you use the link in the video description below you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium so you can try out as many classes as you like. So follow that link in the description below and you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. Okay guys, if you are new here, you need to know that the information in these videos is primarily for Northern Hemisphere based observers, but there will be the odd sprinkle of information for those in the Southern Hemisphere, and that is again the case this month. That said, things like full moon and new moon dates, or any dates where the moon conjuncts with another planet is the same worldwide, because as Earth rotates, we all share the same night sky. So as I mentioned guys, the perpetual twilight that we had in the Northern Hemisphere over summer is finally coming to an end we will see the return of darkness and the nights are just getting longer and longer there's still a small chance of maybe seeing some last minute noctilucent clouds but as the skies get darker the northern skies will now start to be taken over by the northern lights which have been seen as early as mid-august so those in the far north in norway and iceland are going to start keeping an eye on the solar data again. But if we turn our attention away from the northern skies and face south, the Milky Way core is still out pretty much all night. But as time goes on, the Milky Way core will begin to set in the southwest and we will have less and less time with the Milky Way in the sky. It's still being straddled by Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter being the brightest object in the night sky this month after the moon, and it's shining at a magnitude of minus 2.3. It's just above the bright giant red star Antares, which is not to be confused with Mars, which cannot be seen this month because it's too close to the sun in the night sky. But Jupiter sets at around midnight, Saturn, which isn't as bright, it's just magnitude plus 0.2, sets at about 2.30 a.m. local time. It's also a good month for Mercury, the most elusive of the naked eye visible planets, and it will increase its magnitude from plus 1.9 to minus 1.7 during August, so it'll turn very bright and it reaches greatest western elongation on the 9th of August, so worth setting your alarms to wake up for like 5 a.m. Uh, and catch Mercury in the pre-dawn hours lighting up the twilight skies. So, new moon is on the 1st this month and full moon is on the 15th. As for conjunctions, the gibbous moon will be right next to Jupiter and Antares on the 9th, but then two days later it will be right next to Saturn. And if you're in Australia or around Australia, you can actually see an occultation of Saturn. So an occultation is where one object blocks the view of another object and on the 11th, the moon will actually pass in front of Saturn. And you can see this example here taken last month by Pablo, who's been in the last two vlogs on my channel. But this is what you can see around Australia this month on the 11th. So if you're down under, worth checking that out for sure. Now, one of the annual highlights of August is, of course, the Perseid meteor shower. However, this year, unfortunately, the night of the peak, which will be the 12th into the 13th, is hindered by a large gibbous moon and that moon doesn't set until about 3 to 4 a.m local time which for those of us in the uk means that the moon doesn't set until astronomical twilight has just started so unfortunately the moon's going to wash out all but the brightest meteors thankfully the perseids can be quite 
big and quite bright. So some of them will definitely shine through the moonlight, um, and you'll have a better chance as the moon gets lower and starts to dim as it approaches the horizon. But Perseid meteors are not only bright and large, but they quite often leave uh, these very distinct green and a little bit of pink in the in the tails so they can be really pretty in the photographs and it means that it's quite difficult to mistake a satellite for a perseid because the satellites will be white with no color but the perseids typically have a nice bit of color to them but the the perseids meteor shower is quite a broad meteor shower the activity peaks on one morning however the couple of weeks before there's actually quite a lot of of activity as well so it may be worth going out at the start of the month in the pre-dawn hours uh, and trying to get some early perseids and there's also a chance to get some delta requirements too now the delta required meteor shower is normally uh, more of a southern hemisphere meteor shower but the radiant point of the meteor shower approaches the northern hemisphere horizon in the pre-dawn hours so at the start of august if you're out in the early hours of the morning the pre-dawn hours expect a little bit of increased meteor activity but sadly, the peak of the Perseids is going to be ruined by that big moon this month. That is pretty much all I've got for you this month, guys. I hope the voiceover format was okay, and I hope you guys don't prefer it after I spent all that sponsorship money on the green screen. <laughs> But on to the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a subject to photograph and then I feature the best images that I find in the hashtag Wittens. Last month I asked you guys to tag your pictures of Noctilus and clouds, but there were also some great images from the partial lunar eclipse. So I'm going to share some of my favorites on that as well. But let's start with the NLCs. So, first up, we've got Get Globalized, with this image captured in Windermere, some gorgeous Noctilus and clouds in the sky, a perfect reflection, even some stars reflecting in the water there, just a really calming, serene image, I really like this one. Next up is this stunner from Gareth Modern Photography, again, some insane detail in the Noctilus and clouds, a nice choice of a, a long focal length there, and then the silhouette of Penmon Lighthouse, adding some nice foreground interest. And lastly, from I Love Fridays Me, don't we all, uh, this absolutely stunning image of a castle. I'm not sure which castle it is, but just got that gorgeous orange glow of twilight and the NLC is just really taking over the sky. I mean, it's just an absolutely stunning display, just really high in the sky, filling the frame nicely, even with a wide angle. And I really, really love this composition. As for the lunar eclipse, I really loved this image from London Viewpoints at a place called Vantage Point of the lunar eclipse rising over the, the tall buildings there in London. So it's always good to see astrophotography occurring in places like London where there's so much light pollution. Next up is this image from T Spires Images and just an absolutely lovely shot. I mean, I love the colours here. The, the, the blue and the red just balances so perfect and that's such an interesting subject to have in the foreground and just the detail as well, the textures in that building, all the little birds sitting on the railings and it reminds me very much of War of the Worlds. It almost looks like a, an extraterrestrial robot there. But lastly, we've got this image from Tim Graham at Glastonbury Tour. I absolutely love this image. It's the super long focal length and, um, you know, the, the tiny people really, really far away just look amazing against that moon. And this is actually the image I was going to go for myself, but I was tied up with my premiere for my BBC documentary Moonshot. So quite ironic um, that I was stuck indoors because of a documentary I'd made about the moon, but I was really, really happy when I saw that Tim had captured this wonderful image and a couple of others as well at the same night. And yeah, just fill in the frame with that gorgeous orange moon and absolutely loved it absolutely smashed it well done Tim so yeah that is it guys this month what can I get you to do this month obviously if the weather's good and people get some early Perseids but let's go with planets I guess anything that's featuring a planet this month especially Mercury you get bonus points for Mercury so let's go with planets anyway that is it from me this month guys I've got another vlog from the Atacama Desert coming soon and stay tuned for that because I've teamed up with Ben Rowe for a giveaway so that's going to be exciting and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon I wish you good luck and clear skies